Introduction to Antibiotics, Gram Positive versus Gram Negative. A gram stain is another type of test that is used to assist in classification of pathogens. Gram stains are useful for quickly identifying if bacteria are gram positive or gram negative based on the staining patterns of their cellular walls. Utilizing gram stain allows microbiologists to look for characteristic violet, gram positive, or red pink, gram negative staining patterns when they examine the microorganisms under a microscope. Identification of bacteria as gram-positive or gram-negative assists the healthcare provider in quickly selecting an appropriate antibiotic to treat the infections. Sample gram-positive infections. Streptococcus. Streptococcus, the name which comes from the Greek word for twisted chain, is responsible for many types of infectious diseases in humans. Streptococcus is an example of a gram-positive infection and is identified by its ability to lyse or break down red blood cells when grown on blood agar. Streptococcus pyogenes is a type of beta-hemolytic streptococcus. This species is considered a pyogenic pathogen because of the associated pus production observed with infections it causes. Streptococcus pyogenes is the most common cause of bacterial pharyngitis, or strep throat. It is also a common cause of various skin infections that can be relatively mild, such as impetigo, or life-threatening, such as necrotizing fasciitis, also known as flesh-eating disease. Staphylococcus is a second example of a gram-positive bacteria. The bacteria Staphylococcus comes from the Greek word for bunches of grapes, which describes their microscopic appearance in culture. Strains of S. Staphylococcus aureus cause a wide variety of infections in humans, including skin infections that produce boils, carbuncles, cellulitis, or impetigo. Many strains of Staph aureus have developed resistance to antibiotics. Some antibiotic resistant strains are designated as methicillin-resistant Staph aureus, or MRSA, and vancomycin-resistant Staph aureus, VRSA. These strains are some of the most difficult to treat because they exhibit resistance to nearly all available antibiotics, not just methicillin and vancomycin. Because they are difficult to treat with antibiotics, infections can be lethal. MRSA and VRSA are also contagious, posing a serious threat in hospitals, nursing homes, dialysis facilities, and other places where there are large populations of elderly, bedridden, and or immunocompromised patients. For an image of Staphylococcus bacteria microscopically. Sample gram-negative infections. Neisseria meningitis growing in colonies on a chocolate agar plate. Gram-negative bacteria often grow between aerobic and anaerobic areas, such as in the intestines. Some gram-negative bacteria cause severe, sometimes life-threatening disease. The genus Neisseria, for example, includes the bacteria N. gonorrhea, the causative agent of the sexually transmitted infection gonorrhea, and Neisseria meningitides, the causative agent of bacterial meningitis.
another common gram negative infection that is seen in hospitalized patients is E. coli. This is a frequent culprit for urinary tract infections due to its presence in the GI tract. So broad spectrum versus narrow spectrum antimicrobials. The spectrum of activity is one of the factors that providers use when selecting antibiotics to treat a patient's infection. A narrow spectrum antimicrobial targets only specific subsets of bacterial pathogens. For example, some narrow spectrum drugs only target gram positive bacteria, but others target only gram negative bacteria. If the pathogen causing infection has been identified in a culture and sensitivity test, it is best to use a narrow spectrum antimicrobial and minimize collateral damage to the normal microbacteria. A broad spectrum antimicrobial targets a wide variety of bacterial pathogens, including both gram positive and gram negative species, and is frequently used to cover a wide range of potential pathogens while waiting on the laboratory identification of the infecting pathogen. Broad spectrum antimicrobials are also used for polymicrobial infections or a mixed infection with only multiple bacterial species or as prophylactic prevention of infections with surgery invasive procedures. Finally, broad spectrum antimicrobials may be selected to treat an infection when a narrow spectrum drug fails because of development of drug resistance by the target pathogen. One risk associated with using broad spectrum antimicrobials is that they will also target a broad spectrum of the normal microbacteria that can cause diarrhea. They also increase the risk of a superinfection or a secondary infection in a patient having a pre-existing infection. A superinfection develops when the antibacterial intended for the pre-existing infection kills the protective microbiota, allowing another pathogen resistant to the antibacterial to proliferate and cause a secondary infection. Common examples of superinfections that develop as a result of antimicrobial use include yeast infections or candidiasis and pseudomembranous colitis caused by Clostridium difficile or C. diff, which can be fatal. Probiotics such as lactobacillus are commonly used for individuals with C. diff to induce normal bacteria into the GI system and improve bowel function. So to summarize, a broad spectrum antibiotic will treat gram positive and gram negative bacteria. A narrow spectrum antibiotic will treat either gram positive or gram negative bacteria. If a patient is started on an antibiotic that is gram positive and the culture identifies a gram negative organism, the medication will not improve the patient's status. The selection of an incorrect antibiotic can lead to adverse reactions and increased bacterial resistance. At times, a broad spectrum antibiotic may be administered prior to receiving the culture report due to the severity of the illness of the patient. Once the culture is reported, the antibiotic therapy is tailored to the patient. It is the nurse's responsibility to review culture results and ensure that the results have been communicated to the prescribing provider. Antibacterial actions, bacteriostatic versus bactericidal. When a provider selects an antibacterial drug, 
it is important to consider how and where the drug will ultimately target the bacteria. Antibacterial drugs can be either bacterial static or bacterial cidal in their interactions with the offending bacteria. Bacteriostatic drugs cause bacteria to stop reproducing, however, they may not ultimately kill the bacteria. In contrast, bacterial-cidal drugs kill their target bacteria. The decision about whether to use a bacterial-static or bacterial-cidal drug often depends on the type of infection and the overall immune status of the patient. In a healthy patient with a strong immune defenses, both bacteriostatic and bactericidal drugs can be effective in achieving clinical cure. However, when a patient is immunocompromised, a bactericidal drug is essential for the successful treatment of infections. Regardless of the immune status of the patient, life-threatening infections, such as acute endocarditis, require the use of a bactericidal drug to eliminate all offending bacteria.